hey, honey, how's it going? I'm breaking up with you! Oh, uh, what? And I'm going back to Cotton! To... to a human? He's more of an Elder Dragon than you'll ever be! And he's also got a giant... Cotton, are you playing with those dolls again? Shut up, Commander, you don't know me! Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, imagine a world where we have a Monster Hunter game that exists purely to showcase the best and brightest. Sort of like Generations, having loads and loads of different monsters, but let's say it is funded by some millionaire benefactor that said the one condition is you're not allowed to have a monster that is too similar to any other monster on the roster. The Gobules and the Nibble Snarfs, the Giganoxes and the Kezus, or, in this case, today's subject, the Teostras and Lunastras. I'll fight fire with Fire. And sure, there are arguments to be made about their differing historical importance to the franchise, but I think the best course of action is to simply decide which of the two monsters is, to put it plainly, the best. It's me. No, it's me. Ecology. Both being around since ancient times, as far as the lore itself goes, these guys are very heavily linked with each other. So we have to dive a bit deeper than that to really discern between them here. They are both known for eating coal to fuel their fire abilities. Though, while Lunastra is known to eat live prey for certain, the only thing that we have documented evidence of Teostra eating is, well, gunpowder. Literally stockpiles of gunpowder that he takes from human settlements. Like, I know that they are implying that he shows up and everyone flies and lets him take it until he is taken care of by hunters, but I can't help but picture a Teostra stealth crouch walking behind these tiny little hunts in this village and then leaving with this giant sack of gunpowder slung over his shoulder like the Grinch. As far as the explanation for the explosive powders they possess, I, I think that's actually super cool. Though again, it is something they share. Through their diet, their dead skin cells turn into a powder with blast properties. This is mostly stored within their hair, which is why they have such glorious manes and such furry wings. It's all storage because it's not just dead skin cells in general, it is very specifically dandruff. They kill us with explosive dandruff. Look at the glorious dandruff! The coal they eat also mixes with their saliva in ways that supposedly allow them to do their fire breath too, but really from this point on they share all the biological adaptations with each other. The horns each emanating a different aura. One further note, I, I shit you not, word for word, a Lunastra will always choose the largest Teostra with the most abundant mineral deposits as their mates. Abundant mineral deposits. Remember the family jewels, son. As a result of all this, I, I sort of feel like I have to give this to Teostra. They are mostly pretty evenly matched, Teostra's lore has a bit more depth to it, and uh, honestly, I just really love the image of sneaky Teostra robbing the human villages of gunpowder. Take that, honey! Well, that's a little rude, my hot cross bun. Funness. When it comes to funness, I'm sorry, but this is a pretty clear-cut section to me. Lunastra, you, uh... You don't win. There are a lot of things that I respect about you, and many things that I admire, and they'll definitely come up real soon, but as far as the actual experience of fighting you, I have to say it's just sort of plain unenjoyable. Between all of the unavoidable damage, the inability to flash her safely without good group coordination, the wind pressure, and the chances of getting hit by fire that traveled halfway around the map to get you through the craziest chain you've ever seen, it's just not fun to be a part of. Teostra, well, he's a pretty chill dude in this department. Nothing that actively takes away the enjoyment of hunting, but with the bonus of flashing him out of his supernova feels pretty badass, so he gets that little bit of a bump above neutral monster funness for me, making him the winner of this category. Another point for the better monster, oh yeah! Oh, we're getting competitive, are we? Design. And this is where these two creatures really absolutely shine over a lot of things. I feel like a lot is lost these days with our crazy things like our Shara-ish Valdas and our Xenojivas and our Valkanas, that there isn't enough appreciation for something that, sure, is simple, but absolutely perfect. The fiery lion dragons. What a beautiful combination and what a beautiful result they turned into. They have a lot of visual similarities from the way that they're shaped, the, literally the tails and the wings, to the legs, the general bodies, only particularly changing in color before we reach the head, where they have different horn designs and different hair situations. I have to say, while I appreciate Luna's hair, Teostra's beard is absolutely magnificent, which makes me lean a little his way, and the color difference I think is entirely subjective, well at least when it comes to on their scales themselves, because once we get into the fight, it's a whole other story. Blue fire is cooler than regular fire in a game where the majority of the monsters actually use regular fire. It not only looks fantastic, but it is a fantastic design 
decision to make the fight feel genuinely different from all the other firefights while still being a firefight. I've met a woman with so much... Fire. So as far as aesthetics go, while well, they are very close, and even things like both of their supernovas basically cancelling each other out, I do give this one directly to the Empress herself, Lunastra. Take that, you flea-ridden heat bag! I, uh, wow, you go hard. Coolness Factor. This one will make more sense with other monsters in the future, as clearly neither of these monsters are cool. They're hot. This one is sort of hard, and there is a reason I didn't go too in depth on the mechanical parts of their fight in the last section, is because I think Lunastra's fight has this coolness factor in spades simply due to her actual mechanics. Don't get me wrong, Teostra is cool as hell. I love his everything, he's a great guy with a great fight, but at least for me, the concepts behind the New World Lunastra fight are just something else. Even just visually, the amount of her attacks that are either crescent shapes or generally moon-esque to reflect the fact that she represents the moon is amazing, but that is before we even get to how interesting and cool the mechanics are, especially the first time you encounter them, from the fire puddles that have multiple stages, can block ranged ammo, and chain to each other, to little things like her always producing the level of heat that makes you have to have a cool drink to avoid taking damage. It's just something that adds to the general intangible feel of her fight, and therefore the general coolness of the monster, which to me is just so much higher than Teostra's. Sorry, buddy. Come on, I can't I can't lose to someone who wasn't even in the base game. At least no one calls me a toaster! Death fight? And this is one of those instances where the specific monsters in question are very interesting to ponder. If we are talking actual proper in-game power, then it is almost a stalemate. They are both heavily fire-based and rely on heat itself for a lot of damage, and both are fully resistant to fire. However, Teostra also has a number of specifically blast attacks, and Lunastra is two-star weak to blast. So if you did manage to get these two into the same room without having them fall madly in love with each other and convince them to fight each other instead, Teostra would probably win over a very long period of time, even if only by a little bit. In lore, I don't think it would be even close. We have lore that literally states that Teostra created the nest that he has in the Elder's Recess by exploding through the inside of the mountain. I'm just saying, that is some explosive-ass dandruff. Teostra takes this one real easily. That's right, I may be a toaster, but you just got burned! Yeah, well, then shut up! <laughs> so that leads us to the conclusion. If we are going straight off of who won more categories, then the answer is Teostra. That said, even though I was the one who decided the victor of these categories, I can't help but feel like, in my mind, Lunastra is the better monster. What I think is, if we wind up in this strange, unusual situation where we can only have one of these two monsters in a game, it sort of has to be Teostra. But that said, I think in that situation, it would be perfectly reasonable for the developers to maybe incorporate a few of the Lunastra mechanics into his fight. I could definitely see that happening. But that is just a thought. If you guys either have a different opinion than me on the overall outcome or even on each individual category, feel free to tell me I'm wrong and why. I'm totally open to criticism. <laughs> And please feel more than free to share any monsters that you think would be really nice to see put through this same process. A one-on-one, -on -one, in-depth battle to find out who is the better monster. And maybe you guys will think of some with more of an interesting final fight than, well, fire versus fire, where both resist fire. I tried, okay? But I feel pretty confident in saying, yeah, as much as I subjectively believe that Lunastra is better, Teostra might just be the objectively better monster here, though the best version of both of them is is a combination of both of them, maybe with purple fire, called Talunstra, or something like that. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Alright everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been Teostra vs. Lunastra, a battle to the death for my love, which they both won in their own rights, as far as I'm concerned. Do you agree with where I landed in each category? Which one of you will be the first to send me a fully animated clip of Teostra being a gunpowder ninja? Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, Oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons, even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.